Hello and welcome to Hardy Party at five and a half. Uh, Rebecca? Why? What are you doing? I'm checking my calendar for 2028, of course. Oh my goodness, you are planning ahead again, aren't you? <laughs> Always. You're thinking about going to the IKA Culinary Olympics That's in right. Stuttgart. Yes, they are every four years in Germany. It is 67 countries that compete. You have to try out to be on this team as a chef. They serve 8,000 meals to over 100,000 people. And dude, we need to be one of those two 100,000 people. Yes, we do. And you can also buy tickets to try the meals. So we, we're definitely doing that. That's definitely we got to budget all this. Yeah, we 100%. definitely do. the The Olympics have been going on since 1900. That's as long as the like Summer Olympics. <laughs> yeah. So for us, the Olympics have already happened. This happened in February, and we are just now finding out about it. Yeah. And I am totally shocked that we did not know this happened. I know it's yeah. totally crazy. We have to go. And you know what else I'm gonna spring on you right now? What's that? I think we should take people with us. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to go to these Olympics with us, you better give us a shout out and let us know because we will take you with us to Stuttgart. Okay. Rebecca can plan some travel. So this is not, this is serious. This is serious. You're totally serious. I'm 100% serious. Okay. Let's go guys. Let's go. Today on our podcast, we have Ted Polfelt. He competed this past like session for the Olympics. It's incredible. Like, you're going to love everything he has to say. He also has opened a restaurant in Virginia, which we're definitely going to go to that, too. And I don't know. Maybe we'll invite you along for that as well. (laughs) But right now, enjoy this interview with Ted Fulfelt. Before we dive into this this culinary Olympics, which also IKA, is that what do you say IKA or do you call it something else? And how do you pronounce those? What that's what that means? I'm not even going to try to say it in German because <laughs> we're not um, either. But most people around the world do call it the IKA um, culinary Olympics. Some people just shorten it. I, I don't think there's any wrong answer. Okay, IKA. We kept looking at it and we're like, we are not going to try to pronounce this. No, me, me neither. Uh, you know, I've been to Germany a few times now and I still, my English is about all I speak. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's where we're at for sure. That's funny. Yes. Um, so how did you start cooking? Like you're, you're a pretty young guy, but you have done some amazing things. So tell us where you got your start. So it's funny. I, my, my best friend got a job as a dishwasher at a local it's called the Brambleton Deli. It's a local deli shop. They're pretty popular. They have a bar, sandwiches. He got a job washing dishes there. And honestly, uh, he just asked me and I wanted to come hang out with him. And I just started cooking like that, uh, washing wow. dishes. And so I, a lot of people, I, I joke, I've got a good buddy of mine, Chef uh, John Shop, who I teach with at the culinary school. And we uh, always have such different point of view. He grew up watching Julia Child. and always paints this romantic idea that he he wanted to be a chef at like four years old. Like that's all he's ever wanted to do. And I'm like, yeah, I, that's, that wasn't me. I got a job at a restaurant and really I just, I fell in love with the energy of that um, yeah. people and the chaos. And I don't know, I played a lot of sports growing up, everything. I don't know if I was ever very good at any of them, but I played everything. And to me, cooking in a restaurant setting like that was a lot like playing sports. It was like, if I can sell this ticket faster than that guy, or if, I don't know, I've, I've always been a con- completionist if you will I like to mark things off and so I that's what I fell in love with first um down the road obviously I got some more training and and um I fell in love with the food later on I'd, I'd say now I, I I love it much more than I did when I started yeah yeah so you started out as like competing but then the fundamentals of cooking like the fundamentals of yeah. became your thing absolutely yeah <laughs> But like the chaos, because we we watch cooking shows and stuff, and you see the chaos there. I can only imagine the chaos at a restaurant where you're trying to really provide for mm-hmm. customers. Do you get like like we've talked to other people? Do you get like super focused when there's that much chaos around you? Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, I, I my cooks and and chefs around me will probably recognize me saying this phase. I like to say I don't do chaos. You know, I've reached a point in my career where I've done this for so long that. That's why we overthink our mise en place. We overthink our organization. We have list for list, and and those things will will keep chaos out of it. Don't get me wrong. There's still stuff will happen and things like that. But yeah, um, I I, I kind of joke with people that I'm too old for chaos. Let's let's not do it. 
Like, let's just be prepared and we don't well, worry about it. That's just what I was going to say. He's a prepared guy. Right, which, yeah. You know, I'm the list maker. And so I totally understand if you prepare, you don't end up in chaos. <laughs> this actually came up in conversation last night, coincidentally. We had a family gathering, um, some longtime cousins. There's like 20 of us. We haven't been together. And there was, there's always an argument between me and my wife. She's not a list maker, which drives me bananas. Yeah, I know how that goes. So we go to the grocery store and I'm like, well, do we need sour cream? I'm like, no, you have two, three tubs in the. <laughs> refrigerator drives me nuts where's the list it's in my head i'm like that's not a list okay not a list. <laughs> <laughs> oh i totally understand everything you're saying <laughs> now i will say that did get me in a little bit of trouble a couple of weeks ago we had a cook-off i had a cook-off challenge with angie reagan she was on next level chef she lives in lubbock down the road from us and she was like we'll come to you and we'll just have a cooking challenge well i'm a hairdresser so what do i know about a kitchen but i made this amazing list of exactly like I mean, at seven o'clock, I'm cutting onion at 702. I'm like, I have my whole list and she is not like that at all. And uh, I did not put a couple things on my list that she helped me change. Like she told me, do you know how to quick pickle? And I was like, no, she explains it to me. I'm like, I'm going to quick pickle this onion, but I didn't put it on my list. <laughs> guess what? I forgot to boil the water. So my onion was not quick pickled at all. Uh, my dish was fine, but the rest of it was not, it was, you know, it was mediocre. Uh, not compared to her, she brought like twenty four hundred dollars worth of tomahawk steak wagyu steaks from Australia. Australia, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's almost cheating. It, <laughs> it was cheating. I feel Thank like you. She came to Texas with tomahawks. She kind of rigged the process there. She, yeah, oh, it was incredible. <laughs> Anyhow, it was a blast though. But what we've learned here is make your list and check it twice, <laughs> yeah, and right. then you don't end up in chaos. There yeah, you go. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we started looking into this, and the, the Culinary Olympics look so cool. I can't believe I hadn't heard of this. Like, so take us through the process of how you got chosen, and then just what the whole event's like. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, um, you know, so the Culinary Olympics has been around since the early 1900s. Yeah. Um, and it's always been held in Germany. I don't know if it always will. There's talks that they might move it someday. But um, so every four years, they have this large team-based competition there are, are also individual competitors that, that happen around there there's also a giant food show i'd say if you ever get a chance or looking for an excuse to travel it's it's a great food gastronomic expo of, of international proportions it's pretty neat while this is going on there are these plexiglass boxes where we have competitions going on there are three or four different um, categories uh, they've got a military um based which all, so there are countries that's in the military team and community catering and they cook there's a youth team um, where nations will send a youth team with uh, a team that are uh, 24 years or younger and then the 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 biggest one being the the national team which is kind of the the largest honors and so every every country uh is allowed to send uh, one team to represent their country and usually it's the chef organization from each country that owns those rights um, and so in the United States, uh, the American Culinary Federation uh, is the largest organization for chefs. And so they have held the rights since 1950, I believe, to send a team of chefs um, to represent the U.S. there to compete. Um, and so um, every four years, they host a tryout. Um, I tried out for uh, the 2020 team in 2017, and uh, the tryouts were held in Disney. So the, the process is, you know, there's an application process. They they really want to look at um, a little bit of the person, to be honest. Chefs don't have egos at all. <laughs> um, and so honestly, they've got to stick six people in this kitchen for six hours and high intensity stress, pressure, people watching, distractions. I mean, it's uh, it takes a, and so you all got to get along. And so yeah. you start out with an application process to kind of get to know the, the person and chef. Um, you know, they do look for some competition experience and things like that. And then after that, um, some interviews, Zoom meetings, um, and then they have some phases of tryouts, usually two. So in 2017, I tried out. I did not make it in fantastic fashion. Um, <laughs> I, it, was, it was a learning experience, so it was a great opportunity. And so uh, um, I, I, when I didn't make that team, I, I watched the guys that did, and I traveled to Germany in 2020 and watched them compete just so I could kind of see the process, um, which was amazing and, and cool to – see and 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 watch those guys and then you know was ready for the next tryout so i tried yeah. out for the next team was fortunate enough to make it and uh so when we tried out i went through the interview thing um we did hot food which are we had to do you know a four course menu that was custom to us um and i had to fly to k2 
Kansas City to do that. Um, and so I packed all my gear in Roanoke, Virginia, all my food and things, got an airplane, flew there, um, did that. And then two months after that, we did um, what they call cold food, which is kind of a part of Chef's Table. It's like old, uh, you know, curing and terrine making and finger foods and things like that. Um, we would do that in St. Louis two months after that. And then they announced a team and we were, uh, we were formed. And so for three years, every month, we would travel somewhere across the country and host a practice. Uh, usually it was either through our sponsors. We had some great sponsors like Middleby and New Chefs. Um, and so we would go to one of their facilities. Um, they would support us and we would go through the whole process of, of practice. And then we would fly home, rinse and repeat and kind of go like that. And so every month, it, it was funny, it's the buildup was, you know, we would have meetings in between there with the ideas. And then once once a menu was formed, it was like you were talking about lists on list on list to yeah. double check. And then, you know, setting up equipment, going through a whole run. And then you know, sometimes not a lot of sleep, you know, it takes a long time to get through that. And then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so when you would get together, how long were you together to practice? Sunday like, through Tuesday. So we would always fly in. That was kind of the format for all these chefs. You know, we all work. Um, some other countries, uh, their chefs are supported by their government, and sometimes they get some stipends and salaries where they don't have to work quite as much, but all of us are working chefs. And so yeah. we uh, um, we would come together on a Sunday, and that would be kind of set up. Monday would do a full run. Tuesday would do a full run. And Wednesday would all fly back to our families wow. and jobs. And yeah. Get back to it. So as part of the competition, were, did you have to do, you know, I know you had to do like many courses. And so what you were practicing on was really like, you're, you're doing exactly what you're going to do in that competition. Just rinse and repeat. Yes. Like, Jeff, uh, our, our head coach, Jeff Storm was pretty adamant about that. He was like, we're going to, we're going to practice the way we play, the way we compete okay. and it's that way when we get in there and it's whatever you guys will, it'll be muscle memory. So he was very yeah. adamant about that. And we were, we had a really supportive coaching staff. They were amazing. Learned yeah. learned a ton. Um, but yeah, so every so there were two parts of the competition. Um, one is called Restaurant of Nations, and so we had to feed a three course meal to 110 guests. And so we had five hour or six hours to prep, and then there was an hour and a half of service. And so, yeah. like I said, there's plexiglass boxes. That's where we were for those six hours, and then there was a dining room right in the center of there where people could buy tickets. Yeah. So after the the preparation, it was like normal dinner service. We had you know our captain up there plating with another chef, and they were calling tickets. You know, fire ten apps or ten entrees or twelve desserts, and we kind of roll wow. through it. Wow. Um, and so that was one day. The next day was they call it chef's table, and so you basically feed a about a seven or eight course meal to twelve people, and it's supposed to be uh, kind of drived around a, a Michelin starred restaurant. So we have to carry in a showpiece that represents our nationality. Uh, there's a dip and butter service, um, finger foods, vegan, um, cold food, which are some of those terrines and finger foods we were talking about earlier, and entree, dessert, and pet fours. Wow. So what did y'all fix for them? Like for the the main 12 there, what, did, what was your service? What uh, did, for yeah. uh, Germany, I, I don't have it off. So <laughs> I'll try to go <laughs> through it best I can. I, I, I should have notes or something. <laughs> that list is gone. <laughs> so our... Uh, our butter was a caramelized onion butter with malted potato crumb. So it was the kind of idea from that was like French onion dip, to be honest, and potato chip. What's more American than that? You know, a lot of this stuff has to represent us as a nation. Not that, not that we can't use other ingredients, but they're really looking for whatever your country is to yeah. be kind of based on that. And so um, after that, we did a black eyed or a black bean, black bean dip with cotilla cheese and uh, pumpkin oil and kind of a pepita crunch. Uh, finger foods. We had a. It was a serrano ham and cheese uh, brioche. So it was kind of it's supposed to be that grilled cheese tomato soup mini brioche. Oh, yeah. You can eat yeah. one bite. All the finger foods have to be picked up. They all have to weigh between ten and twenty grams. So it all. Oh my gosh! It's yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. Now, trust me, we have already put in our budget for twenty twenty eight that we we're going There's to this We event. definitely want to go to. This I mean, sure. we. It's, it's an amazing journey. There's a 2026, the the Culinary World Cup in Luxembourg. I recommend that one as well, only because it, it happens around November and it's Christmas time. Yeah. Um, when I got to, when we did, we did that competition to prepare for IKA. And so it was November of, my years are mixed up now, 2022. Yeah. And then the Olympics are 2024. But um, my kids were fortunate enough to go. I mean, my wife, and they got to 
eat raclette and uh, you know they have glue wine all over it's very europe europe does a great job of christmas yes yeah, so yeah we actually just went to the christmas markets last year and we went yeah. to luxembourg but we were i think we were beginning in december so we must have just does it every other year the one in luxembourg the... no it's every four it's just like the oh, high so days they just kind of miss each other by two years yeah okay yeah yeah but yeah that's beautiful yeah that is so it looked so like cool. from the videos and stuff that you walk in with your flag and all that just like the olympics what was it like was it just <laughs> did you get hyped just walking through with your flag and stuff hey, in the ground? i yeah i don't even know how to describe it i mean i like i said i i was in the navy reserve so i i've always had some patriotism in my blood and very proud to represent our country in any capacity but it, it was pretty cool i mean i we we chose, uh, actually, coincidentally, I'm not a tech fan because my dad went to UVA, but Inner Sandman was our walk-in song. Um, <laughs> there's even no college sports, but um, yeah. it was just, I don't know. I it, I can't even describe it. The energy in the room, the excitement that we had. I mean, we obviously wanted to represent everybody well. And so the, we had the youth team with us and yeah. on their faces. It was just a really emotional uh, few minutes as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, the whole team is made up of, club chefs but what's the difference between a club chef and a restaurant chef well so coincidentally i so i i didn't work for a country club until midway through my journey on team so i've actually my career i've been a restaurant chef um the entire time i that's just kind of what I, I i gravitated to i worked for a gentleman here in Rhode virginia who owns well now he owns eight independent restaurants but so i worked for him for almost 20 years um and it i had an opportunity to go to a club and so I, I I took that opportunity, and uh, so I'm a chef at a country club and own a restaurant and some other things. But um, I'd say you know I don't think there's a difference. Uh, although I will say a club chef, you it, you know you you get the same guests, so they're all members, so you see those people day in and day out. So it was very easily for me to be in a restaurant, and I could say something snide behind my back or be angry or whatever. But it's like you never know when that guest is going to come back. I mean, so it it takes a, a a very good mentality and a want to care for people. I'd right. say to work in a club because you you're gonna see those people. It's they're yeah. gonna be extensions of you in your kitchen. Yeah, it's a little more relational, actually. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very cool. So do you get to uh try out again and will you try out again or is this like a one and done? <laughs> we 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 could have the opportunity. Uh I uh, no comment per se <laughs> discussion for my wife and I. Um it, because it, it it's a huge commitment. And yeah, needs to take that sure. but um, yeah, anybody that I I just think I, it's a great opportunity for anybody to to step forward out there. It's uh, it's it. I don't know. Competing to me was always uh, you know, it's really easy for me to sit in a restaurant kitchen or my club kitchen and everybody around me tell me how great I am. It's different for me to go be judged by my peers and to you know really learn and take criticism and critique and and yeah just grow from it. yeah that's so true okay so speaking of time like you're an executive chef you are uh, a dad you're and you're opening a restaurant how are you doing all of this and tell well, us I actually opened the restaurant before uh germany we've been open for about 10 months so oh, okay, um, cool. I, I you know i teach full-time at a community college um which is I've, I've taught there for almost 10 11 years they've been super supportive of any of my crazy endeavors or whatever. And so that's pretty cool. You know, we're off in the holidays and the summertime just based around, you know, the state. And so that's always been pretty conducive for me to do other things. So uh, the restaurant group that I used to work for when I, I, they were just really happy when I started teaching and it was a good benefit for our employees and everything else. So it always kind of worked. And even being at the club, you know, our, the way we offer dinner service and the way our, our stuff is structured really is just kind of nice the way it mirrors. Um, and I'm pretty fortunate to have a lot of really great people around me, like my wife and children and, and staff and chefs. And so I've always tried to take care of them and they've taken care of me pretty well. Yeah. So what's on the menu at your new restaurant that you've had open for a little while now? So it's... I I'd say it's Southern driven and with some international flares, um, yeah. you know, I grew up in the South. Uh, it's where I'm from. Um, my two business partners, one of which being my wife, um, who's our, our bookkeeper and accountant. And then uh, Crenshaw Reed, who was a, I say kid, he's only a couple years younger than me, but he uh, worked for me for a long time at the restaurants. He's our uh, food and beverage director at the country club. And he actually lives right across the street from me. Him and his <laughs> kids. So we've, we've, we've been inseparable for a long time. Wow. But um, we, we all grew up here. So it, it does have Southern roots in what it is, uh, you know, 
One of our most popular dish is probably our chicken schnitzel, which is pounded breaded chicken, mm -hmm. um, just like pork schnitzel from Germany. But it's yeah. we do Alabama barbecue sauce, pickled mustard seeds. We've got a great local millery, uh, gracious day grains that we get our grits from, and and some collard greens that really kind of tie that together. So it's comfort um, with with some fun there. You know, we've got a braised short rib with horseradish crumb and white cheddar mashed potatoes. Yeah. Waffle bread pudding. Delicious. We travel a lot, so you might see us there. Oh, you will definitely yeah. see us in your <laughs> Please restaurant. let me know. My my daughters work there. Uh, it's very family run establishment. You know, we're we're only open five nights a week, um, and that's not from a profit driven standpoint. It's just to give quality of life and balance to our staff and try to yeah. make the world go round. Yeah, awesome. Okay, I want to go back to the Olympics real quick. Okay. How did you end up finishing? What was your? Did you place? Uh so we finished. We got two silver medals. Nice. Um, so the way the the placing works is everybody's competing against the standard or the scale, and then they take those points and then they'll they'll place you after that. So uh, gold medal is a 90, 90 point scale, ninety to one hundred. Silver being you know eighty to ninety, and then bronze, and then a diploma after that. Um, we got two silver medals. Uh, you, the the scores are online on. On wax, uh, both of our scores were an 89 point, one was an 89.6, one was an 89.7. So a little wow. Nice. Yeah. wow. We were close. We did we did very well. We we're very pleased. Um I think we finished sixth, six or seven. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, but it was it was an amazing journey. I mean, I, the all the everybody, those top six, seven teams were only separated by like a point and a half, two points. So it was all very, very, very close. Wow. So cool. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so we've talked about how busy you are, how you kind of keep the chaos away. And I, I was reading some things and I saw this quote that you gave and you said, balance doesn't mean that everything is always in balance. <laughs> so what does that mean? What do you mean by that? So I, like I said, I teach at a community college, so I, I get to rant a lot to, to young, young minds, old minds. I don't know. I probably just talk and move my hands around, but um, <laughs> I always, we always, talk very real with our students about, you know, this industry and life. I mean, I think we probably have more conversations about life with our students more so now than we did 10 years ago. And I think it's a good thing. We, we all need to have conversations, but, um, you know, our industry got beat up after COVID mm. for being, you know, you work too much, too many hours, you're gone on holidays. Like it's just being a chef's the worst. You shouldn't do it. And, and I disagree with that. I think there's that our industry needed to change. And I think COVID was a good caveat for that. I uh, think, you know, the pay scale and some of those things, I mean, all that stuff needed to change. And so I, I always tell my students about the balancing. It's like, yeah, there are there are times of the year as a restaurant chef or club chef that I'm, I'm going to have to do nothing but work. December, holiday season, like those are very busy days. Thanksgiving is a busy buffet day. There are days that that's, sorry, I've got to, yeah, I've got to push some stuff aside, but it's, you know, it's bringing that balance back, being aware of what your life is on the other side. It's like, I always, um, uh, my family, um, I've always been going on Thanksgiving. I've always worked. And so we always did Thanksgiving on Tuesday. And that, <laughs> that was our own tradition. And honestly, it kept me away from my in-laws. It was kind of nice. We could keep it like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I love my in-laws. But, um, but that was how we made balance with it. And so yeah. that's always worked for us. So it's like being able to recognize that. that like, okay, December, I'm really busy. Well, in January, I'm going to spend more time with my family and, right. and get everything back to where right. it needs to be. It's just yeah. trying to keep that self-awareness. Right. Yeah. Right. And what you, what balances your family isn't going to balance necessarily everybody's family. No, but everybody's, you've got to what works. And, and make it work for. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Well, you have definitely wet our palate because we will that's be right. showing up definitely at your restaurant. We're going to be in Luxembourg. We're going to be in Stuttgart. That's right. That's My brother. Awesome. Well, please I'm, let me know. Stay in touch. I would love to. We will definitely. Buy you a drink and, and toast. Yeah. That would be, be great. great. My brother does live right down the street, I said, and he married his, he met and married his wife in Germany. Actually, she's not, she's from not far from Stuttgart. So she actually would probably really like your chicken snitchels. She <laughs> makes a lot of German food at her house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be wonderful. We should definitely go visit. Please do. We'd love to have you. Yeah, that sounds great. Ted, thank you so much for enlightening us on this amazing world that we're just now learning about and can't wait to learn more about. And hopefully we'll get to go to that in 2028. There you go. It's on the calendar. So thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank yeah. you, Ted. Thanks a lot, Ted. Man, I love Ted. I do too. Just, I, when we were talking to him, I was just like, this is a working man chef. Mm -hmm. This is my kind of guy. <laughs>
<laughs> and I just have visions of wearing a cheese hat and painting my body red, white, and blue. You know? And going to these Olympics. I have those same visions of you. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> Great minds think alike. That's right. <laughs> but we've got to get to the Olympics in 2028. Mm -hmm. We've got to get to Luxembourg for those world, the world championships in 26. <laughs> and even before that, maybe sometime this year, we need to get to his restaurant, Brood, in Virginia. Yeah, that's right. We yeah. definitely need to get there. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe I should try out for this for this team. Should I try oh, out Oh, yeah. But you've, you've gone head-to-head -head against the next level chef. So yeah. that's just the next step in mm -hmm. your chef competition yeah whatever yeah. that is actually the one thing i would have to offer is you all know i'm a list maker mm. i'm an incredible list maker and i can keep you on track 100 percent. but other than that yeah i don't know if i have much to offer but i will plan a trip <laughs> so is this your tryout video for the culinary team oh yeah this is it right we're here. gonna send the application and you're gonna be all-time list maker that's right all-time okay. list maker okay. just don't ask me how to quick pickle anything cause apparently i don't know how to do that <laughs> So we are very serious. If you guys want to join us on this trip, let us know. Honestly, we will book something together. Yes. Let's make it a group. And we would have so much fun. He does a lot of research. He's fantastic at planning trips. And we want to go see this. We know you do too. And I hope you guys enjoyed this interview with Ted Polfelt. Hardy party five and a half, over and out. We'll see you next time.